Strategic Living with Brian Holmes, episode number 31. Welcome to the program today, everybody. My name is Brian Holmes, and you have found the Strategic Living Podcast, where we are all about transforming minds, developing leaders, activating destinies, changing nations. We want to see you become all that God has uniquely created you to be. Hey, we want to come alongside and help you to accomplish everything that you are designed to do. It's going to be a great episode today. We're talking about relationships. I think you're going to find it very helpful. So just get comfortable, be safe, and let's engage our hearts and minds, everybody. Let's get started. Well, it's always a joy to have you with us on the program, and we are just plugging along here and doing what we do, having a great time. I'm really, really excited today about the opportunities that are ahead of us, and I'm going to be sharing some of those with you a little bit later in the program. Uh, I want to say that I'm really, really excited about my particular opportunity where next week I'm going to be able to head back over to Franklin, Tennessee and spend some time with Dan Miller and a group of other great-minded uh, individuals we're going to be just working together and sharing ideas. It's going to be a wonderful time. If you did not hear our podcast a few weeks ago, our interview with Dan Miller, I really would encourage you to do that. What a great, great, great conversation. I believe with all of my heart, the uh, the wisdom, the understanding, some of the, the tips that were coming from his mind and his heart would be so helpful to you in your journey of discovering. Well, I want to just get right into the program today. And for a while now, I've been really contemplating this whole subject of relationships. In fact, uh, last year I did four, I believe it was, Monday Mastery video segments on the subject. And, you know, the thing about relationships is, is that we will always have them in our lives in some way, form, or fashion. They will either be adding value to our lives, or in some cases, they will be taking value from us. And I, I just believe that maybe for two or three weeks, I might be talking about this because I just think there's so much to unwrap here. A couple of questions that I would begin with today, just for your consideration. What would life be like if there were no relationships? What, what if you had no connectivity to any other human being? And what if uh, there was just no exchange taking place there, value for value, the law of reciprocity being fully involved in your life? When you look at the relationships that you presently have, how do you classify those? How do you categorize those? Have you ever taken time to really consider where each individual relationship fits in the matrix of your journey and where you are right now in your life. Another question that I think is important to consider is, do relationships change in different seasons of our lives? And the obvious answer to that question is yes, but I want to explore that with you a little bit. What does that mean, how relationships sometimes change, the dynamics change? Uh, maybe they graduate from one level to the other, or maybe a relationship that's been in our lives for a season moves on, and that relationship is no longer. That's oftentimes painful, but sometimes it's necessary. How do we navigate through relationships that we presently have whenever we are faced with conflict or tests in that relationship? These are all questions that I think deserve some attention and some of our time. So, Today, I want to just begin this process with you and talk about understanding the five levels of relationships. And again, this is not to be an, an authoritative ex, uh, discussion on relationships. I just want to give you some things to consider and think about as we really navigate through life, being involved with other people, engaging in life with other human beings sharing our values, sharing our dreams, sharing our destinies. 
What is the value of that connectedness, and how do we really steward those relationships? We're going to look at that right now. Well, I want to just share a few proverbs with you from the Bible. We always try to begin with some scriptural principle that lays a foundation for where we're going to go. So let's look at three of my favorite Proverbs. Proverbs 13 verse 20 says, He who walks with wise men will be wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. Once more, he who walks with wise men will be wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. It's powerful. Proverbs 18, 24 says, a man of too many friends comes to ruin. Did you know that was in there? Very interesting. A man of too many friends comes to ruin, but there is a friend There's a category of relationship that sticks closer than a brother. And I know oftentimes we we speak of Jesus Christ in that way, but this is a small lowercase f. There's a category, a quality of friend that sticks closer than a brother. Our last scripture is Proverbs 17, 17, and it says this. It says, a friend, a true friend loves at all times, and a true brother loves is born for adversity. Proverbs 13.20, Proverbs 18.24, Proverbs 17.17. I hope those are uh, just a great launching off place for us today, and I believe they will be. Well, I want to begin today by talking about what I believe is, is maybe a bit of a problem in our world, this relationship matrix that we, we find ourselves in. I'm, I'm deeply concerned about the state of relationships these days. The way our culture and society has been evolving over the last number of decades, true connectedness, real relationship, doing life together has become something of less and less importance. In fact, I, I really, really wonder sometimes whatever happened to those kinds of relationships. You know, there was a day in our culture where, you know, people in the neighborhood knew all the other neighbors, you know, and even when I was growing up on Berry Creek in Houston, Texas, I I could tell you the names of almost every one of our neighbors on our street. In fact, we we did life with those people. We'd, We'd throw potlucks together and we'd, you know, our friends had come over to our house and they'd raid our refrigerator and we'd do the same thing at somebody else's house. And it's because there was a measure of trust and relationship and connectedness, even on that level, that was valued in our culture. And I think over the last number of years, some of those values have been eroded by well-meaning individuals or well-meaning movements and in some cases, very simply, technology has moved us down the, the road a little bit in this way. But, you know, with the advances of technology uh, being even as wonderful as they are, and God knows, I, I'm not sure what I'd do without my iPhone 5S. I, I love technology. I love having everything I need in the palm of my hand or on a tablet or on my laptop. I, I love all of that. But my fear is that this era of electronic engagement has actually replaced heart-level real relationships. And by the way, this is not the main point of of this program today, but, you know, uh, having a quote-unquote, and I'm, I'm with my fingers, I wish you could see me right now using quotation marks, having a friend on Facebook does not and should not make you feel as though you have garnered some valuable, meaningful relationship. And when somebody unfriends you on Facebook or disconnects with you on Twitter or whatever the case may be, you should not take that as some monumental affront. We, we have actually come to the place in our culture where 
those things mean more to us than sitting down over a a dinner table or a breakfast table or a burger with somebody and just exchanging our hearts with one another with one another it's just it it blows me away how these various mechanisms have replaced literally replaced the the value that we once had on real relationships Another one of my pet peeves, if I might be so honest, is texting. I, and oftentimes I, I I tell people all the time, by the way, for me, I, I am not a texter. I, I will do it. Uh, if if I, someone texts me, I will text them back. But I will drive that conversation to a phone call or to a Skype call, something where I can engage a person in a real conversation. Because texting, frankly, I mean, all this LOL and LMBO, and yes, I know what that means, by the way, if you're wondering, and and all these other little acronyms and these little symbols and these little codes and and just the the disassociative nature where we actually believe that that those kinds of exchanges constitute our hearts being connected to people. This is, in my estimation, a, a real problem and a real challenge. Because the more disconnected we become with other people, the more disconnected we become from our need to to do life with and relate with and and feel with other people. You see, texting and emails and Facebook, we can actually disassociate ourselves from the feelings of those relationships because it's it's just words on a page or words on a screen. And these things concern me in today's relationship matrix. I, I feel as though we need to address this on some level because I, I need you to know that these kinds of relationship points, and I, I use the term relationship very carefully there and very liberally, I suppose, but, but connecting on those places, I believe has become an easy, comfortable, and sometimes a cop-out way to psych ourselves out to believe that we're not isolated and we're not alone, and by golly, we have all these wonderful people we engage with. I, I just don't know how real and how authentic that is. Well, let me just say this. God did not create us to be alone. In fact, in the very beginning, and you know the story, and I could certainly extemporize on this for quite some time, which I won't, but when God first formed man out of the dust of the earth, one chapter later, at least chronologically speaking, as we read it, God looked at down at man, his creation, which he was very satisfied with and very pleased with. His cre- he looked at all of his creation and said, this is all good. But then he said, it is not good for man to be alone. There was something about man's aloneness that arrested the attention of the Creator Himself. And of course, I understand that the context of that scripture was that there should be a mate, a, a, a someone to share life with, to procreate with, and all of that. But the fact of the matter is, is that that alone state was not a healthy thing. And a number of years ago, in a particular conference I was attending, a great mentor, a person who has truly been a friend to my wife and I over the years, made a statement in his session as he was teaching. He said, a person only needs two things in life to really succeed and experience total fulfillment. They need relationships and they need resources. He went on to say that if you have to choose between the two, always choose relationships. And I, at the time, I thought, well, of course. But then the more I thought about that, the truth is most of us will make a beeline for a resource or a financial uh, contract or a financial opportunity. And many times we do so at the expense of a relationship. But he said, if, if you have to choose between relationships and resources, always choose relationships because healthy, godly, authentic relationships will always open the door for the resources you need to accomplish what you've been given to do. And I find that so true. You know, you can have all the money in the world. You can have all the quote-unquote success in the world. 
But if you do not have meaningful relationships in your life, it is my strong belief that you're broke. You can have access to tremendous resources and and all kinds of uh, you know pie in the sky pseudo relationships and and you can be known in this circle and in that circle. But unless you have real, authentic, heart level, doing life with kind of relationships. I really believe that you will wind up unfulfilled. The Apostle Paul, in his writings in the New Testament, he talked about this in several places. And he talked about it in relationship to the body of Christ, but he he talked about the need for us to be connected. And while each person is uniquely different from another, and, and that's true physiologically, it's true emotionally, et cetera. You know, one person may have certain propensities, certain strengths, talents, personality traits, all of that. While we may be different, and that is, in fact, what makes life really work, he went on to say the eye, this is a metaphor, the eye can't say to the ear, I don't need you. The The big toe can't say to the arm, well, I'm I'm not directly connected to you, therefore I don't need you. No, we are all a part of one huge structure. Jesus at one point said this. He said, don't say that you love me and yet you hate your brother. Don't say that you have this heart for me and you don't have a similar heart for those that are connected to you in my body. The truth is, ladies and gentlemen, we are interconnected. We are absolutely joined together. In, in fact, I would go so far as to say is we're interdependent. I, I don't believe we are independent, and I don't believe we are dependent, but I believe we are interdependent. There, there is some part of us that needs some part of someone else to make what we have been called to do complete. And I, I, I truly believe we're designed by the Creator, to have meaningful connections, meaningful relationships. I I believe we are created to interface with other people. So many people evolve, I think, into being alone and being isolated as a result of having gone through painful situations as it relates to certain relationships. You know, the, the truth is, as long as we deal with people, just just hear this. Just I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but it is what it is. As long as we are doing life with people, there's going to be times when we're disappointed. There will be times when we experience hurt. There will be a moment when someone says something that that cuts to the heart and really stings and really creates a bit of damage there. Because not one of us are perfect. Not one of us. And as human beings, we have the propensity and the ability to disappoint one another or to hurt or to to maybe not meet someone's expectations. That's just a part of the human condition. But I would like to submit to you that those issues that we are left with in this life, the imperfections, the propensities, the the very strong possibility of there being disappointment or hurt that takes place in relationships. We cannot allow those things to drive us to isolation. We cannot allow those things to to taint our heart and our mind so much to the point that we find ourselves disconnected from the life of God that is in someone else. We can't let those situations change our our DNA. You know, I'm a person who does life all in. I'm kind of an all in sort of a guy. And even as it relates to, uh, you know, being with other people, I I just, I just love hard. I love deep. My wife's the same way. And, and over the years, we found this to be true. You know, we, we just, we don't know any other way. And, And I will tell you this, when, when there have been hurts or times of disappointment, there is this human thing where we want to retreat, we want to go hide, we want to shut down, we want to build up walls, we want to isolate ourselves. 
And it's, it's almost this self-preservation thing that we get into. But I want to share with you today that that is, in and of itself, self-defeating. It's self-destructive. It is the very thing that Satan will use to disconnect you from the very people that God wants in your life so that you can actually accomplish what he sent you here to do. We need each other. In fact, I believe our destinies are tied to each other. Well, if that's not a heavy way to start the program, I don't know what is, but what I want to share with you today, I believe we can build on that foundation. I wanted to start with this premise that no matter where you are in your life, no matter what is happening right now, no matter what situations you've been through, no matter what disappointments you've experienced, uh, no matter what relational uh, context you are processing through right now, I want to say to you that we do need each other. And yes, relationships change, and we'll talk about that in another session. But we do need to be connected to other people. So let me just talk for a couple of minutes here about different kinds of relationships. We obviously have relationships that are are defined as family. This is, you know, this is our our spouse, our children, our our parents, siblings, cousins. These are people that that are truly family to us. And sometimes that's not just blood family. Sometimes that extends beyond because God does put a grace on some relationships where, you know, you look at David and Jonathan in the Old Testament, and and those guys obviously were best friends, but the truth is they were like brothers. They were, I mean, as a matter of fact, David was closer to Jonathan than he was his own biological brothers. There was something there that that caused that to be a family type of connection. So we have family. We have mentors and teachers and spiritual leaders. These are people that that we relate with and we receive from and we grow because of their influence and their their counsel and their coaching and and the input that they are uh, exchanging with us and pouring into us. That's a type of relationship. Then, of course, we have friends, what we call friends. We're going to talk about that because that, that word friends is a tricky word. But we have friends and peers. These are people that, that are on a similar journey we're on. They're, they're peer level. They're friends. They're people we're doing life with day to day. And we have workplace relationships. These are what I call contextual relationships. They, they, they might be a relationship that is based on my job or my career or the field that I work in, or it might be, if I'm a student, the people that I engage with like professors or, or you know, friends at school or classmates. These are relationships in a particular context, and these are important relationships, and, and they are very seasonal. And then we have, you know, what I'll broadly call casual acquaintances. These are people that we've met, we know them, they know us, they might have some type of connectedness to us, but, but they're, not, they're not people we're really doing life with. They're just casual acquaintances. And I would submit to you that it's very important that, that you and I know clearly who we are so that we can accurately and effectively define or identify where each of our relationships fits in this, this whole thing. Because to misidentify a relationship could be to, one, miss out on its benefits, uh, or two, it could cause you some pain and some hurt and some disappointment. So we have to first be very confident about who we are and be very clear about what our direction is so we can really accurately see and define these other places. You know, many times we, we would call someone a friend who really should be in the acquaintance category. Sometimes we, we have known someone for years and years and years and years and years, and because of the tenure of the relationship, we assume that that relationship merits a certain label or a certain category, yet you know, not, not always does a long time mean a close relationship. Sometimes we, we will take someone who is way on the periphery, and they're, they're really not going to ever add anything to our lives, but we allow them into uh, our inner circle. That, that can be a real problem as well. We'll talk more about that in just a moment. 
Now, in a show notes, in the show notes today, I, I've provided you a graphic that I believe is just visually profound in that it shows concentric circles and it really shows how these, these levels work because at the very core of, of our relational nature, we have to be able to be at peace and totally resolved with ourselves. So at the very core is, is this relationship called self. We talked about it a moment ago. You gotta know who you are. You gotta be at peace with yourself. You've got to be comfortable in your own skin and really, really sure of of what God is expecting of you, is requiring of you, is leading you to to do in a particular season. You gotta be solid with yourself. It begins there. It really does begin there. A person that doesn't have that piece together is gonna have a very difficult time relating with any of the other levels. Of course, the second layer out from that is family. The sec- the third circle out from that is close, intimate, covenantal friends. Close, intimate, covenantal friends. It's just imagine concentric circles, if you will, and just kind of play this in your mind. And certainly, I encourage you to go to the website. You'll see it right there on the post. And then you have the next circle out from there, which is acquaintances. Or this might even be what you would consider to be your tribe. These are people who follow you. They, they're connected to you because they're attracted to something in you, and they, they want to be in your orbit, but they may or may not have made it across the threshold into what you would call intimate, close relationships. So let's, let's kind of go back and backtrack here. Self, family, close friends, and you have the circle called acquaintances or maybe your tribe. The next circle out from that is one that I just call the crowd. This is the noise. This is this is the big numbers. These are people that that may occasionally come into your orbit. They may occasionally uh, connect with your events or with your whatever's happening in your life on a very broad spectrum scale. But they are not really people you know. They're not people that you connect with on any level. They're not people that you have have really had much conversation with. But you you see them around. You know they're just always around. That's the crowd. And then you have the fifth level out from self, which is the sixth level ultimately. And and you may not like this level much, but I, I feel like it's so critical that we address it. This is enemies and fools. Now, we read a scripture a while ago about how a man has to be very careful to walk with wise men because if you hang out with fools or if you let fools into your inner circle, you will suffer harm. Inevitably, there's going to be problems if you allow fools into these smaller, more tight-knit, intricate covenantal circles. So I, I wanted to make sure that was there. And, and by the way, not all of your enemies are fools, and not all fools are your enemies, but that, that's the category where you'll find these people hanging out, way out on the periphery. And they are not for you. They are against you, or because of their own personal lack of discipline, lack of integrity, lack of character, or maybe maybe the issues they've not yet resolved in their own heart. Because of that, they're broken enough that you you need to keep them a little at a little bit of a distance until they've sorted some things out. Because if you allow them too close, they can cause damage to your journey, damage to your progress, and they will not allow you to to grow as you are called to grow. So self, family, close and intimate friends, these are covenantal friends. The next level is acquaintances or maybe your tribe, the people that follow you. The next level out is the crowd. That's just a, just that's the people on the periphery. It's a noisy place. It's a busy place. There are a lot of folks hanging out there. And then the last circle at the very far edge is enemies and fools. The key is to know how to define each of these levels. I mean, I'm, I'm giving you some parameters maybe that would give you a framework to define these, but I believe each of us have to be very clear on how these, these particular circles are defined. What does it mean to be family? What does it really mean to, to be a close, intimate, covenantal friend? How do I define covenant? How do I define friendship, actually? 
What does it mean to, to be an acquaintance? You see, man, I've got a lot of folks in my life that are acquaintances. They're a part of my tribe. They, they follow our blog. They follow our podcast. They follow my teachings. They'll, they'll land up at a conference or two here and there. They're part of my tribe, and they are wonderful people. They are not bad people at all. As a matter of fact, I, I'd love to have some of those people move into my close friends circle. But I, I've got to know, how do I presently define this, this acquaintance and tribe circle? How do I define the crowd? How do I differentiate between someone who's in the crowd and someone who, who is a, a tribe member? And boy, a real important one is, how do I define? And this, this is where we have to go to Scripture to really get this clear. How do I define who is my enemy? And by the way, you're supposed to love your enemies, pray for your enemies, and, and always be willing to humble yourself with your enemies. So I'm not, I'm not asking you to go on the offensive. I'm simply saying you do need to know who your enemies are. And you certainly need to have discernment to know who around you is presently acting in a state of foolishness. Because how you steward those relationships will have a direct impact on your ability to, to move forward. A very important thing in understanding the value of relationships is placing the relationship in the correct circle. Now, first, you've got to define what each of those circles are to you. But then you have to, to really steward and manage, where do I place this person? Now, this sounds really kind of weird because it's like, well, I don't want to qualify and classify. I just want to love everybody, and I want to hang out with everybody, and I want to be friends with everybody. Well, I'm going to say to you that, that that is a naive approach to life because if you're going to go where other people haven't gone, there will come a time when you have to separate yourself from some people. I don't know if you caught what I just said. If you want to go into areas of success and blessing and prosperity and development and fulfillment that other people haven't gone, you will have to separate yourself from the crowd at some point. You will have to, to go beyond where others may be willing to go. And in doing so, it requires separation. So you absolutely have to know where a person fits in this, this model or this matrix that we're talking about. So if God brings someone into your life that he has sent to you to be a true friend, a real friend. And by the way, a friend is not a yes person. A friend is a person who will look you in the eye and say, you know what, man, I, I've just I got a real problem with your attitude. I, I think I'm, I'm concerned about this. I'm praying with you about this, but I want to call you on this. I don't like the way you spoke to your wife. I don't like the way you you did this. And I, I'm, you know, when the other day when you said this, it really, it really bothered me. A, a friend is somebody you can do life with and, and exchange with on that level. But if God brings somebody into your life that is intended to be a real friend, a real mentor, a real spiritual leader, anybody that God has sent to you in that level, and if you keep them on the outside and just classify them as a tribe member or as an acquaintance, then you've missed the opportunity to receive the benefit from that exchange of life that God sent you. Conversely, let's look at it, let's flip the coin over. Someone who is in your orbit that's intended to be just a crowd person, they're always going to be a crowd person. They, they don't necessarily have the want to, to develop and grow and to, to really do what it takes to become someone of great character and great quality. They're just going to be a crowd person or even maybe an acquaintance. But if you bring that person very close into your inner circle, your friend circle, your covenantal circle, well, I tell you what, that relationship is destined to be one that takes from you. It, it, will, it will definitely connect to you, and it will receive from you. But ultimately, there will not be reciprocity there. There will not be the exchange of life there. You will be emptying out, but you will not be getting filled up. Even worse than that one, maybe, is when we either inadvertently or out of the goodness of our heart allow a fool into our inner circle. Someone who is not invested in your success, someone who is not truly given to seeing you become who God's called you to be, someone who is not really uh, committed to the grace of God being manifest in your life as you are, you allow that person into your inner circle 
and their influence, their attitudes, their lack of willingness to grow, and their overall lack of character now begins to affect you, well, then you've missed an opportunity because that will become drag to you. That will become something that is a weight to you. In fact, it will be a life taker, not a life giver. You say, well, Brian, that's really harsh. Well, it, it is strong, but let me just qualify it like this. Every person, I believe this with every fiber of my being, every person that God has ever created, God created them with a predestined purpose in mind. Therefore, every person has the potential for greatness. And because of that, every person has the potential to add something of value to your life or someone else's life. However, it is important that we use discernment in understanding. When we come into contact with individuals, we have to not judge them harshly or judge them unjustly, but we have to discern and understand where are they in their journey now. It could be that their potential has not yet come to a place of maturity and therefore it wouldn't be I, I can keep them in the acquaintance place and and certainly engage and do some life with them, but I right now is not the time for me to bring them into this inner circle. I've got to be able to know when that is. At the same time, if someone has been in your inner circle, this is a tough one. We're going to talk more about this in next week's session. But if someone has been in your inner circle, and they have been allowed permission to be in that inner space. And there comes a moment in your walk and in your journey where you have made a decision to move forward and to, to go to another level. And at that point, for whatever reason, not out of malice, not out of harm, not because they're a bad person, but they, they may or may not be willing to go to that next level with you, you may have to redefine what circle they go in. You say, man, Brian, that's tough. Not every relationship is right for every season. Did you hear what I said? Not every relationship is right for every season. Can I tell you what? Every person you have in your life today, every relationship you have, they are comfortable with you being where you are. I'll say it again. Every relationship you have in your life today, they have come to expect you to be who you are where you are, in the context you are. As soon as you decide that you're going to grow beyond where you've been and all of that, when you begin to make progress, when you begin to break out of that shell and go to the next level in your developmental process, then you become someone other than who they've been familiar with. At that moment, they have a choice. Do they embrace the new and developing you, or do they then create some sort of conflict or some sort of separation because they're not willing to go where God is taking you. Everyone's comfortable with the way you are right now, but as you grow, if they're not willing to go and grow with you, uh, I've got a friend of mine, and I'll mention his name, Dr. Sam Chand. You can find him at samchand.com. Dr. Sam Chand he has this saying, and he uses his thumbs. If you can just visualize both of my thumbs pointing up, and he, he moves them up. He says, you either have to grow or you have to go. And when he says go, he moves them out from himself, like out to the sides. So it's either up or out. you got to grow or you got to go. And sometimes we find ourselves in seasons where that has to be addressed. Now, this brings me to where I want to close out this session on relationships. Some relationships are for certain seasons. I, I hope you would write that down. Some relationships are for certain seasons. And when a relationship's season of purpose has come to an end, I would submit to you it's not wise to continue to pour into or invest in that relationship on the same level as you would drain yourself of the very resources that God may be shifting their focus. So some relationships are for season. Some relationships are covenantal in nature and are sent by God to be lifetime relationships, lifetime relationships. These are our relationships. And yes, by the way, these relationships will change with time. 
And at different levels, as you grow and as each person in the relationship goes to another level, the relationship congruently moves together in, in sync. But it's a relationship that is meant to be a lifetime relationship. Some relationships are situational. Situational. This would be relationships that are built around the, the context of doing business together or, like I said a while ago, the educational uh, season of life. And many times these situational relationships are temporary. They're, they're for a, a, the period of a contract or they're for a period of time while you're at a certain job or a certain assignment or in college years one to four. You know, think about this. Uh, if you've graduated high school, uh, I would tend to say, and this is true of most people, that probably 80 to 90%, if not more, of the people you graduated high school with, you've lost contact with. Those relationships were the most important things in the world to you during the season in which you were in the situation or the context of high school. But once you moved on, you know, people move out of different cities and they change jobs and they change spheres and they go into this tribe and they follow after the heart of God this direction. And before you know it, years down the road, you have people who, if you saw them today, you'd love them, you'd hug them, you'd, you'd exchange, you know, pleasantries and you'd get caught up on what's been happening in their life. But but the, the relationship is no longer the same. It is now a periphery relationship. It's an acquaintance. It's not a, an inner circle thing anymore. It's situational. It was situational. Some relationships are strategic. That's my favorite word, if you haven't figured that out. And by that I mean they, God will send certain people to you and into your orbit in certain seasons and those relationships are strategic in nature because they have to do with your assignment. They, they, are, they can be door openers. They can be sphere openers. They, it's not just that they're, you're, you're getting from them and not giving anything in return. No, it's, that's never the case. A true relationship is always reciprocal. It is give and take. It is sowing and reaping, okay? Always. So please understand that. But what I'm saying is, God sends strategic relationships to you at specific times because of your assignment and your progress towards it. And those must be stewarded in a different kind of way as well. Let me say this. All healthy relationships, all healthy relationships are given by God to be mutually beneficial and for the common good. And so what I want you to do, what I'm going to ask you to do is to do an inventory, go to brianholmes.com forward slash 031 and pull up the show notes and look at the graphic and just look at this, this circle image that I have for you. And I want you to get a, a yellow pad out or maybe if you're working on your computer and I want you to just list all the people you have in your life that, that you would consider to be relationships no matter whether they're inner circle, whether they're family, whether they're way out on the periphery out here, but list them out. And then ask the Lord to help you to know, God, in this season of my life, as I am moving towards more of you, more of your work for my life, more of what you've designed for me, as I'm growing to be the person you created me to be, as I am becoming that man or that woman, I need you to help me to see where do these relationships fit in my life. And I believe that would be a very helpful exercise for you. Now, next week, I'm going to continue talking about relationships. Specifically, I'm going to be dealing with two aspects of relationships. One is, what do you do when relationships are tested? And let me just tell you up front, every relationship is tested. Just as someone who is going to be moving from one grade level in, in middle school to another grade level, it, it comes with testing to graduate to the next level requires test, and relationships are, are not immune to testing. So what do you do when relationships are tested? And then I'm going to talk about this, this whole idea of how do you properly and in a godly way move on from relationships whose time has come. I believe it's very important. I'd love to encourage you to go to the comments section for this episode at brianholmes.com forward slash 031 and, and share with us there, first of all, what you're receiving from this episode, but secondly, 
Do you hear God saying to you, there's some relationship changes coming in your life? Do you hear God saying, you know, you need to, you need to redefine who you have closest to you? Do you hear the Holy Spirit leading you to really assess which relationships are life-giving and the ones that are life-taking? I want to encourage you to look at the relationships in your life, discern and know where they fit into this concentric circle. And this is not to say that these people are bad people. No one on that list is a bad person. But I believe it's so important that you know where they fit in this season of your life and how God would have you to steward those relationships in a way that's beneficial to you and to God's calling on your life. Well, a couple of very quick announcements here. I mentioned last week that we are working on bringing the New Beginnings Encounter, I'm going to call it, to the Houston, Texas area. And we are uh, getting very close to landing on a date, and we're getting very close to uh, determining a venue. And as soon as we have that information, we're going to be putting it out there to you uh, sometime in the late spring possibly possibly early summer. I'm not sure yet, but we'll know in the next week or two we'll be telling you about that. But keep that on your radar. Man, something I'm super excited about that I want to mention to you is this. This coming Wednesday, that is, uh, let me see the date here real quick. This coming Wednesday, uh, which I believe is the 5th of March, I'm going to be conducting a webinar at brianholmes.com forward slash teleseminar. T-E-L-E seminar, S-E-M-I-N-A-R. So brianholmes.com forward slash teleseminar called Who Am I and Why Am I Here? Who am I and why am I here? I would love to have you join us on that teleseminar. It would be a one hour from 7 p.m. Central Time to 8 p.m. Central Time. We're going to be really laying out this whole idea of identity and discovering who you are and why you were here. I believe it will be very beneficial to you. Well, also, we have a number of things happening in our coaching world. I'd invite you to check that out at brianholmes.com forward slash coaching uh, to find out more about that. Well, we love you. We appreciate you so much. I'm encouraged to know that you are on this journey with us, and we look forward to seeing you back here very, very soon. I would love to ask you to do me a favor. If you're benefiting from what we're doing here at brianholmes.com, please subscribe to our updates at brianholmes.com. Also, if you are finding this podcast a blessing and a benefit to you, be sure to subscribe to it in iTunes. Rate us, leave a review for us. That really helps us to rise in the rankings and be more visible to those that have not found the Strategic Living Podcast yet. Also, would love for you to share this with your friends, your associates. Email them, text. Hey, email them and text them and Facebook them and tell them Brian said they need to connect with us on this podcast. Until next time, take care of yourself. We'll see you back here next week.